Welcome to all of you wherever you are. Today is the 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to get all your, all your YouTube messages. Thank you for joining us. Whether you're here in person or joining us online, so glad you are with us today. Well, this is the eighth week of a series calling Liars, Cheaters, Cowards, and Other Bible Heroes. And throughout these series, we've been looking at these biblical characters like Adam, Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, and Samson. Through this series, we have been learning about these men, their flaws and failures. God still uses them and uses them for great things. So continue on with this theme today as we look at the story of David. So this summer, join us. Join us as we get together and know the fact that God uses imperfect heroes to point to us, to Jesus. You will find messages in the bulletin and a daily reflection that will be sent to your email address on our parish Facebook. If you have not shared your email with our office, please do so. If you are away from your faith, thank you for watching. As a church, we are trying to stay connected to you. Know that we miss you and we're praying for you. As we begin our Mass, center your heart for today's messages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters 
that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went on a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. And then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was an earth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked forty days and forty nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste Taste and see the the goodness goodness of of the Lord. Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste Taste and see see the the goodness goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the afflicted man called out, the Lord heard, and from his distress he saved him. Taste Taste and see the the goodness goodness of the Lord. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and deliver them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. Taste Taste and see the the goodness goodness of of the Lord. A reading of the letter from St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and rivaling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as his beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips to proclaim his holy gospel, David, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except 
the one who is from God, he has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord of Jesus Christ. Hello. It's great you can join us today. Great to see you, see you almost, and great to be with you. This weekend, we continue with our summer series unit, Liars, Cheaters, Cowards, and Other Bible Heroes. If you've been with us, you know we've chosen to take a look at the lives of some of the less than perfect people in the Bible. And some of those people that we have visited have had some significant issues. Last week, we worked our way all the way up to the book of Judges. The book of Judges, we learned, tells the history of the people of Israel after they have escaped the slavery of Egypt under Moses. But as Father Dave was explaining to us last weekend, Joshua didn't have a succession plan. And as a result, God, the nation of Israel, while remaining a part of their culture and their history and their tradition, was not really a part of their daily lives. And so the people lost their mission and vision. Their lives became more difficult, as is always the case without God. During this period of their history, the period of the judges, as it's called, there was a growing sense there must be a better way forward for the nation. And that brings us to the story we're looking at today. The story of an absolutely towering figure in Israel's history. Besides Moses, probably the most significant person in the Old Testament. The story is told in various places in the Bible, but is principally found in two books. First and Second Samuel. Now Samuel himself was a significant figure as a prophet. God tells Samuel to make the first king a man named Saul. Saul was impressive. He was powerful. He was strong. And he was ambitious. There was just one problem with Saul. It was his heart. It was two sizes too small. His heart was far from God. In fact, God himself eventually says, I regret that I made Saul king, for he has turned his heart from me. He does not serve me. Saul's heart was far from God, which meant that he wasn't talking to God on a daily basis. He wasn't serving God in his life. We also find that he puts himself on the path of sin. Saul's history is all about going down the path of sin, so much so that finally Samuel more or less fires Saul from his kingship. To replace the king, Samuel was led to an unlikely location, the little town of Bethlehem. And there he encounters a man named Jesse. Now, Jesse had a number of sons. The Lord revealed to Samuel that one of his sons would be king. So Samuel introduced each one, but none were the chosen one, which puzzles and confuses Samuel until he discovers that Jesse's actually holding out on him. He's got another son that he didn't even bother to present to Samuel. So Jesse had the young man brought to them. He was healthy looking, a youth with beautiful eyes and good looking. The Lord said, there, 
anoint him. This is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in his hand, anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord rushed on David. Today, we're going to look briefly at the story of David by looking at two incidents from his life. First, David is the new king. There's only one problem with that, the old king. He's still around, and things are not going well for him. The great enemy of Israel, the Philistines, are attacking. They're led by a giant warrior named Goliath. They were so fierce that Israelites were left cowering in fear, almost powerless to act, afraid to even come out of their camp, much less enter into battle. So Goliath makes a proposal. Send out your best guy and let him fight me. And the victor of that battle will determine the outcome of the war. And in the process, avoid a lot of bloodshed and carnage. Good idea, great idea. Only one problem with that idea. Nobody wants to fight Goliath, not even the king. Meanwhile, David shows up at camp. And while there, he witnesses Goliath blas blaspheming the God of Israel. And David is outraged. So he goes to the king to volunteer to fight Goliath. Saul said to David that, sorry, but you're too inexperienced, a greenhorn. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. Whenever a lion or bear came and took a lamb, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. So Saul, for lack of a better plan, permits David to fight Goliath. Saul gives David his own armor, but it was much too big, and David couldn't even walk with it, so he discards it. Now, in Michelangelo's masterpiece, David actually strides into battle completely naked as a symbol that God alone is his only defense. In fact, Scripture tells us he ran into battle armed only with his slingshot. He takes the giant down in a single shot. He takes the giant, he wins the battle. He brings the war to an end. He routs the enemy, and the Philistines flee in complete fear. The lesson that David teaches us is wherever you are in life, you can actually use what's going on in your life right now as preparation for what's next. Believe that God has something else for you and use this time as a period of preparation for what's next. Now, great story you may be thinking, but what about the title of this series, remember? David doesn't seem to do anything wrong. Seems like he's perfect, too good to be true. Well, that's not the case. Second story. That's where Bathsheba enters the picture. While in Jerusalem, David notices her from his rooftop. She was beautiful. He takes her to bed. She bears him a child. David plots her husband's death, then marries her. That's the way sin works. It escalates. David eventually recognizes that he was on the path to sin. Admits to the Lord, I've sinned greatly in what I have done. But now, Lord, I pray, take away the guilt of your servant. And he atoned for his sins. He repented sincerely and fully because he had the integrity of heart. He had the right heart. David had a heart after God's own heart. Sometimes we think that had we lived in Jesus' day, it would have been so much easier to have faith. However, in today's gospel, 
John makes it clear that not only faith is a gift, but that to believe, we must have certain dispositions of the heart, like David had. Those who murmur against Jesus are closing themselves off to the gift of faith. Those who listen to the Father with humility and an open heart will be drawn to Jesus by the Father's love. Today, we need these same dispositions of the heart. They are essential. A heart after God's own heart. Next week, we'll be discussing in our summer series, the prophet Elijah. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer the Lord our prayers and petitions. For the church, that we may be nourished by Christ, the bread of life, and find in Christ the fulfillment for all the hungers and yearnings of our heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ability to forgive, that through the forgiveness that God has shown us, we may be free to forgive all who have wronged us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been called to witness to the truth, that the Spirit will make strong their witness and protect them from harm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect and appreciation of children, born and unborn, and for the terminally ill, the elderly and the handicapped, that they may be welcomed, reverenced, and protected from all harm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our next generation, that we may help them to share the desire to know our Father and be happy, that we never stop searching for the Father and give us boldness to spread faith among our young people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the COVID pandemic, that God will subdue the virus, heal the sick, and give strength to all who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for the sick and the dying, especially those with cancer and COVID-19 virus, and all who are on our prayer list, that God will touch their bodies and spirits with tenderness and healing love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in his community of faith and our silent prayers. For most holy Trinity Parish, 
that we have a greater unity in the church, and we may be one in faith, one in hope, and one in the peace of the Holy Spirit. And for all who have died, our family members, our friends, and our fellow parishioners, that God will open wide the door for them and welcome them to the eternal banquet of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of Phyllis Plonsky, for whom this Mass is being offered, may the Lord grant her eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you to hear these and all the prayers we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transformed them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. <clears throat> our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love at us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace at our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, by peace I give you. Look not out of her sins, but of the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament which we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now invite June to present the antidotes. Our summer message series called Liars, Cheaters, Cowards, and Other Bible Heroes, we started with Adam, who is the father of all the living. Then we looked at Abraham, who was our faith father.
father in faith. We looked at Jacob. Jacob was a great man of God who laid the foundation for the nation of Israel. Joseph's story is a story about growing to spiritual maturity. Moses had the struggle to embrace what God wants him to do, to stop and listen to God. We looked at the story of Joshua. He was a great leader, an incredible leader, faithful, relied on God, trusted God. However, he forgot to invest in the next generation by sharing his story. Last week, we looked at Samson and his two weaknesses, the weaknesses of pride and women. It is when Samson finally becomes helpless that he finally gives God control. No matter what we've done or where we've been or how we've messed up, we learn that from the story of Samson, God will bless us if we give bless us if we give him control. Today we look at David. David's example can be instructed because eventually he recognized that he was on the path of sin. The key to David's atonement and confession is simply heart. Through prayer and through service, we can develop a better heart, a greater heart. A heart after God's own heart. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.